Oh, here's a good one. Why do French people eat snails? Because they hate fast food. <laughs> no, that's no good. Oh, <laughs> we are. Okay, well, I better put that away. <coughs> Oops. Hello, and welcome to another edition, or episode even, of Marty's Matchbox Makeovers <laughs> Unboxings. Anyway, I have a, a great selection of uh, packages today, some cylindrical, some square, some rectangular, and they're all in brown cardboard. So let me start with the first one for tonight, which is from H. Bloomers, or Bloomers, from Orsdu in Germany. So I don't think I've had too many from Germany, so this is quite exciting. And I've just realized I've left my glasses somewhere. So this is addressed to Marty Matchbox at PO Box 802 in Werribee, Victoria, Australia, which is, of course, my address. <laughs> Let me open it up and have a look. It's part of the excitement. Anything could go wrong. So this is a Duracell box. And within is some few items and a letter. So I'll just quickly read the letter from Dresden. Hello Marty, I have been contemplating since your unboxing video number four to send you some Matchbox models. This box has been sitting on my desk for months. But as things go, I never got to it. Perhaps that is a good thing because I've changed some of the models with others that I hope will give more value to your channel. All of the Matchboxes are mine since I played with them as a kid, but most of them I ruled out because they are of super fast series. UK made, thank God, and until I see you restoring one of those, I will not send you any of them. This could be a nice segue to let us know if you ever want those super fast models, which I sometimes think is not the case. Ooh. Oh, and be the BTW, DDR, kids. What does that mean? By the way, DDR kids would not have had the excitement of Matchbox toys from the evil empire. He's speaking in riddles. Those were all exported to Holland, where I am from. I am not sure if I have duplicated anything, but I've tried to minimize that. I have included two models that I personally think would be great specials. One is a Boeing 747. Oh, wow. You can either leave it as is because it is in good nick, but if you decide to make it over because it is quite boring as it is, you can make an Air Force One special. Hmm, I like your ideas. I am sure you, your US followers will enjoy that as much as I would. The other one is a 969 king size Dodge Charger that is just begging to be converted into a Dukes of Hazard special. I think Matchbox even made that, and I apologize for meddling in your strategies. Anyway, I hope you enjoy them. Well, thanks, Hugo. Let's have a look. Oh, and I've got to keep his email. Hugo Bloomers at yahoo.com. I've got to keep that private. <laughs> no, I made that up. Oh, right. We've got the Scout car. Look at that. And it's got the guy in it, which is brilliant. And somebody's painted it green, which is even better because it means I've got to do it over and fix it up. But it looks like the Scout's around the wrong way. Uh, I look at that. That's weird. I'm going to show you a close up of that. I think the guy is facing backwards. He's supposed to be facing forwards. That could be a collector's edition, like a special, special rare find. I'm going to look into that. Now, oh, another one of these track excavators or whatever they're called without the tracks. That's annoying. In actual fact, there's something else missing, I'm guessing. Like, there's nothing on it at all, like a blade. I don't know. It just looks like it's missing something, but I can't see from where it's missing, if you know what I mean. So that's interesting. Oh, now this is a real treat. Hang on, there's a, a little beauty in here. What's this one? This is one I don't have. Or do I? I do not have this one. It's the Esso, isn't it? I think it's supposed to have Esso on it. And it's the something, something, the Ford Heavy Wreck Truck. Well, there you go. I think that's a first, possibly. That's a good one to work on. It's broken, the hook's missing, it needs stickers, the, uh, the, the, the beacon on the roof's pushed in. So there's a lot there to do, which would be great. I'm saving the best till last here. There's only a couple of them here. Oh, look at that, the little Vespa motorbike, the both handlebars are, are broken off. But you know what, apart from that, it's in really good nick, although it is bent in the middle. Is this a Vespa? I just need to check. Lambaretta, number 36, sorry people. This is a bonnet off of an Opal Diplomat, I believe. 
because I recognise the colour more than anything else. Uh, that's a weird thing. Oh, that's just a spare. Oh, that'll come in handy. Now this here, what is this? This is a Matchbox Dodge Charger. That's the Dukes of Hazard, isn't it? Right there. I mean, just, that's given me an idea. It's a nice big size model. It's got opening doors. And maybe I could, like, get some Dukes of Hazard characters from somewhere. Like Boss Hog and Lindy Lou, whoever her name was. <laughs> that was, uh, I'm quite excited about that. Uh, oh, I thought it had suspension, but no. Nah. Probably did at one stage, but it hasn't got any at the moment. So that's a beauty. Oh, there's the Air Force One possibility. But you know what? That is perfect condition. Look at that. Oh, what a dilemma. When you get something like that, you've got to ask yourself, do I really want to strip it back and mess around with it? Because somebody somewhere is missing that in their aircraft collection and would kill me if I stripped it down. Anyway, I'll have to think about that one. Something to ponder on. Now, this one here is the last one in this box. And it looks super special because, look at it, it's a ripper. Ah, oh, damn, I can't read it. I may have to just show it to you so you can admire it, but it's a beauty. It's a little ripper. It's got two horses towing a Lipton's T. Uh, um, well, it's a horse-drawn bus, isn't it, really? Trolley bus, or whatever you call it. It's not a trolley bus. It's a horse-drawn bus. But it's actually got both horses, which is brilliant. And the little man sitting up there, too. And all the wheels are in pristine condition. So that's a, that's a great set. And I'm really quite excited about this Duke's Hazard idea. I could really run with that one. I could do with letting my hair down, <laughs> so to speak. So that's great. Thank you very much. Hugo, Hugo Blamers from Germany. Thank you very, very much. So the second parcel today is number four. <laughs> Happens every time. And this is a beautifully packaged box. Look at that, I've just got to show you that. It's come all the way from Quakers Hill in New South Wales, Australia, from a lovely lady called Rose Whitfield. And she's taken the time to decorate it with these motor car stickers, which looks really good. And um, I admire your imagination. That's great. So it's a Matchbox themed package. Oh, here we go. Careful, people. Nice. Oh, this looks like hobby supplies. These are always welcome. That's it. Oh, there we go. Oh, wow. Check this out. This is a little treasure chest of goodies from Quakers Hill, New South Wales, Rose. Uh, dear Marty, just a quick note on behalf of my husband Bruce, my son Thomas and myself. We would like to say what amazing restoration work that you do on your models and the time you take in producing your videos. Although, how you get anything done with Kevin always messing around is beyond me. I especially love your unboxing videos and it's no wonder so many people are sending you supplies with the quality work that you produce. I feel that you have branched out into health and beauty products. The design is very becoming. Please accept some supplies from us and stop using your wife's toothbrushes in capital. Thanks for the laughs and your fantastic effort, Rose. So when you say I'm branching out in health and beauty products, you're probably referring to my fake nails. The fake nails, probably. There's a letter from Rose Whitfield. So let's have a look in here. This is great. Wow, these always come in handy. Got some tips. <laughs> oh, I like it. Look at that. They're MMM branded. <laughs> and they got a picture of me on there. <laughs> That's great. She's on handsome. Never knew. Oh, and it's got another picture of a matchbox car there too. Look. How imaginative. I do like that. I'll show you that close up. Oh! Not only is it modeling supplies, it's also broken vehicles too. This one is a Burago Peugeot made in Italy. It's got a wheel missing and it's got an atrocious paint job on it. Somebody looks like they've painted all the windscreens black. Oh, wow. Have a look at that. Oh, I've never seen one of those before. <laughs> right, what else we got here? Some shot glasses. Those are great for drinking games and all that. But they're also good 
for mixing up the paint. You've probably seen me do that. And I cannot get enough of them. I keep saying it. They are brilliant. They are great. It's so handy to have them there when I need them. So thanks. Now we've got a whole range. Oh my goodness. Oh my God. We're going to have the cleanest teeth in the street, if nothing else. Look how many toothbrushes she sent me. That is mental. Hang on. Oh. Are you trying to tell me something? <laughs> Do you know what? Rose, you've ruined my toothbrush joke now. Because I've got no excuse, have I? I've got all Anyway, thanks for that. That was my bread and butter. Right there. Gone. All right, now, what's this? It's very rustling, this paper. Ah! That's a weird one. Oh, it's another majorette. Hang on. Now, that is a Burago, and this is a majorette. That's actually got a metal base on it. I thought they were all plastic. How stupid am I? It's weird though, it looks like a crane or something's missing off the back there. Interesting. A lot of thoughts gone into this. Oh, this is a, a lovely London taxi cab. It even says on it, London taxi. See, I know what I'm looking at, I know my, I know my stuff. Matchbox, it's a 1 60th sized model. Taxi FX4R from 1985. And it's got suicide doors on the back. So called because they fly open in high winds when you're speeding down the motorway and you roll out in the path of cars. So they're suicide doors, that's what they're called over here anyway. So that's a nice one, I like that. An airport shuttle bus. And it's a, it's not a matchbox. Oh, it is a matchbox. Well, check it out. I've never seen one of those before either. <laughs> Oh, that's good. Airport shuttle bus. That would have been nice when it was new with all those stickers on it. It looks pretty groovy and all that. Super fast style wheels on it. Well, fantastic set of supplies. Some interesting models that I've never seen before. And uh, I'm just blown away by your imagination. Especially these MLM branded cotton tips. They are something very unusual and I love it. I love the sense of humour. I am good looking though, really. <laughs> number two, number two. <laughs> the third one is number two. <laughs> you can go to number three. <laughs> ah, now you won't believe it. This one is also, these have been sitting around for a little while now. This one's also from Rose Whitfield from Quakers Hill, New South Wales. <laughs> So I must say, what's, I must see what's in this one. This is a strange waxy type paper. It's almost plastic wrapped. It's interesting, I've never seen that before. I've got to stop saying that. It's true though, what a, that's a great, nice material. I'm blown away by that. Uh, this is a Wi-Fi smart camera. Oh no, it's got another letter in here. It's handwritten, this one. What lovely handwriting she's got. Uh, dear Kevin. Ah, it's for Kevin. <laughs> I know, it, did it say that on the box? Ah, attention Kevin. I know how it is to have an annoying koala in the family. <laughs> really? And as much as we love Cindy, it's time that she left and got married. As we see, life is getting out of control and you seem to be mixing with the wrong crowd getting arrested. We know that Cindy will bring some stability to your life. Please look after her. I know that you both will have a happy life together. Best wishes, Rose, Bruce and Thomas Whitford. P.S. We want wedding pictures. <laughs> oh, it's all puffed up. What? Oh, look at this little thing. Oh, she looks so small and vulnerable. Surely Kevin couldn't marry such a, a beautiful koalette whatever they call it. <laughs> She's got blushed, blushing blusher on her cheeks. That's nice, isn't it? Oh, no, I just realised, look at that, it's a wedding dress. <laughs> and it's even got jewellery around it too. How cute. You wait till Kevin sees her. He'll want that dress. <laughs> oh, lovely. Thank you very much, Rose. That's a... Uh, 
a very nice thing to send and I'm sure Kevin will enjoy playing with it. <laughs> <laughs> that doesn't sound right, does it? So, moving on, we're going to get through these. This one here is number three. <laughs> How many have we opened so far? Four, isn't it? And it's from Tom Jensen uh, from MN, if my memory serves me correctly, is Minnesota. So, what's Tom Jensen? No, what did I say? Tom Jensen. That's strange. I know someone called Keith Jensen. <laughs> anyway, that's another story. What the heck? Hey! Ooh. Oh! Oh my god, it's a self propelled rocket. <laughs> oh my god, it is! <laughs> Blimey! Look at this! This is strange. You know what this is? This is made of wood, I think. Oh, come off! They must be like a training round for recruits to look at and pass around the classroom or something. <laughs> Jeez, that paper tape stuff. Oh, well, let me see what the... This is interesting. Let me see what the, uh, the letter says. It's from the veterinary clinic in Minnesota. Marty, this was recovered from a chihuahua's stomach. <laughs> that was stupid, wasn't it? <laughs> it is from the veterinary, veterinary clinic. Marty, I just wanted to add to your collection. I make these on my lathe. It's a US anti-tank shell, 1941 to 45. 155 millimeter howitzer. Enjoy, from Papa Tom in Barnesville, Minnesota. Tom Jensen. Well, you know what? If I wasn't, if I didn't handle that, I would think that was the real McCoy. But as soon as you pick it up, it's very light because it's made of soft wood, I guess. But the machining on your lathe is absolutely magnificent. You've got all these, this groove here, and a percussion cap on the end, and the crimp here that's holding the, the projectile into the casing is just fantastic. And the way that you've painted it in the deep sax blue color, look it up, people, uh, makes it look so real. And that's going to go in next to those other ones up there. Look. In fact, it's that big, it won't even fit in there. It's amazing. I'm going to have to find a place to stick that. <laughs> in the nicest possible way. <laughs> oh, that's magnificent. Wow! How weird is this? I do Matchbox videos and people send me imitation shells, you know? It's just a crazy world, isn't it? I like it though. I do like it. I might take that to work tomorrow and show everyone, look what I got! And they'll all run and call police and stuff. Now the last, no, second to last, this is a big one. And uh, where does this one come from? Is this number five today? It's from the UK. And it's from Dan Griffin from Rippingale in Bourne. Can never get enough packaging material. <laughs> Dear Marty, thank you for your entertaining videos. We always enjoy them and we hope you like the items in the box. There would have been a lot more Lesney cars, however, whenever we find any about sales, etc. My son James claims them. Fair enough. Include there are a few vehicles that need some work. I was planning on restoring the Cooper Jarrett myself, but was very lucky to find an almost mint example for a very cheap price. It is missing its dolly, but maybe you could 3D print one. Also included are three bars of chocolate. One for yourself, one for Julie, and the third is for the young chap that helps with your filming. As if I recall correctly, no one has sent him anything yet. Oh, Kevin has nothing since he spray painted your newly restored Ford Mustang. Hope he's grounded. Keep up the excellent work. And if you and Julia are ever in Lincolnshire, UK, drop by for a drink. I went there once, RF Coningsby. Best regards, the Griffin family, James eight, Lucy six, Melissa two, and Dan and Sarah, 33. Uh, P.S. The Exchange and Mark van was sent as James thinks it's like Exchange and Marty. <laughs> the items at the bottom of the box are because in one unboxing you said your mother used to make you it. So enjoy. <laughs> 
I just <laughs> box. Oh, look at this dairy milk chocolate from Cadbury's. Three bars. Yum yum. Uh, oh, look at these bits and bobs hidden away in here. Oh, this looks like an old box. Look at that. Wow. Yeah. Oh no, what's this? It's the missing jar of the missing jar of bird's custard powder. It's returned. <laughs> now I've got the full complement of four cans. That's an excellent idea. Thank you so much. We're gonna we're gonna have custard tarts now for the next year. Now here's a challenge coin thing. I'll have a look at that in a second. I'll just get to empty this box out of bits. All right. Oh, this looks interesting. This is a challenge coin of some description. It says the... Oh, it's got some tape residue on it. I can't quite read what it says. I don't know. Oh, no. It's plastic on the inside. Uh, Morris Centenary International Rally. June 2013. And there's a picture of a... Celebrating 100 years of Morris, the car Morris, 1913 to 2013. Oh, I'll have to show you that up close. That's a very nice thing to have, isn't it? I shall add that to my coin collection, which is ever increasing in size. That is brilliant. I quite like that. All right, let's have a quick look now at what these other ones are here. All right, a bus, a different bus, a different one to what I've got, I think. Dame the bus. Have I got one of those? I don't know if I've ever done one of those. I might have done one of those, but I don't know if I have done one of those. <laughs> but it looks sort of familiar, but different. Same, but different, you know? Now, here's another one of these old vintage type vehicles, of which there seem to be hundreds of different types. They're always advertising some other thing, rather than Matchbox itself. They're made by Matchbox, and this one's advertising the Exchange and Mart. Oh, this is the Exchange and Mart one. Every Thursday, Exchange and Mart. It's in great condition, and it's a Lido promotional model made in England. So it isn't a Matchbox. I thought they were, but obviously they're not. I've got a few of these. I'm sure they're not Lido, though. I'm going to have to dig them out now and have a look. But it's good, because I haven't got one of those, but I have now. It's brilliant. I do like these. I've got so many of them now, and I'm, I'm going to have to check to see if they are by Lido. Pretty sure they've got Matchbox written on them, but I could be wrong. Now these look like two oldies. Oh, this is the Ford GT. It's, uh, oh, it's pretty sad. But you know what? That would be very challenging and would be worthwhile doing that up just to say I've done that. Because I haven't done one of those yet. This one here. This is another one that would look good done up. Because it's so ratty. Look, the base is pushed in right in there. It's all like stuffed. And it's been painted and abused all its life. It's great, just the thing I'm looking for. So we've got another couple here. This one looks like a crane. How come all these cars, so many of them have no tires on them? Strange, isn't it? It's like kids used to make their own tire dump or something. There's another example. No tires. But, it's a good one. It's a king size number 14. The Taylor Jumbo Crane. And I think that's a first. That's a first for me. Ah, I need these rams, actually. I need to make a 3D cop copy of that ram. Oh, just come apart by accident. Oh, damn it. Oh, well, I'll need to make some of those for the model I'm going to be doing up soon. So that's good. I've got one now to make measurements from. That's brilliant. If just for that, it's brilliant. But I do like it overall. And I'm going to do a few of these king sizes soon because I want to. This one here is, oh, wow, this is strange. This is the, Mes no, no, it's not. It's the farm one. I thought it was the Mercedes trailer, but it's a hay trailer. Now, I don't know what's happened to this, but that there is almost seized. It's that tight. Can you see how much pressure I'm putting on that to try and turn that? And it's also broken. And I've never seen one in yellow, I don't think. That's very strange how tight that is. It's almost like when they made it, they hit it extra hard in the machine. 
Now, which one next? Oh, there's this little thing here. Oh, it's another aircraft. Wow. I'm going to have all the aircraft soon. Keep getting the odd one here and there and buying them on eBay also. This one has had the undercarriage snapped off of it. I don't know what it is. It's an A300 Airbus. Oh, 1973. So there you go. That's another. I've got to do... Oh, I've got to make up like a little airbase... And have them taxiing around, you know, with lights on. That would be good, wouldn't it? Now, what is this? This is another biggie, king size thingy. Wow, check that out for a model. That's great, isn't it? I wonder if there's uh, something missing there or not. That's a good size toy. Get to grips with that, can't you? And I bet it had the same hook as this model, dangling off the end there. So I can see. 3D printing, or I um, couldn't actually buy, order some. I love them. Look at that. I wonder if that, oh, there's something missing there. That must have had a ram in there as well to hold it up and down. So these, are, like I said, I want to do some king size. So I've got no excuse now. I've got a few now to choose from. Now, oh, this one here. Got to be careful of that cut it. Oh, and there's a box here too. I didn't realize. Oh, that's the Cooper Jarrett trailer. Hang on. Now, this is in the box, in the packet, unopened. And it's a nice little model. It's a number nine fire engine. It's the number nine fire engine based on a 1948 Dennis F2 fire engine. It has a fixed ladder and two large wheels on the escape wheel. On the escape wheel could be rotated. This was first released in 1955. So there you go, this must be released later as uh, Matchbox Originals. It's the Matchbox Originals uh, series, <clears throat> authentic recreation of Matchbox early vehicles. Wow, oh, it looks nice. I'm not too sure they're that authentic looking though, because I have noticed a couple of these, they look a bit blocky, and the detail's not as good as they were when they first came out. They tried to recreate them, but that is another one that will be staying in the box, untouched by human hand, for the next 50 years until somebody else gets it and decides I want to open it up. So that's brilliant. I like that. Now the last box here, it's got the Cooper Jarrett truck in it. Now that's strange because I wonder if uh, Dan has seen. If you haven't seen Dan, I've actually done this one before and done a video on it. To see this again brings back a lot of memories. I've still got the pattern for the doors. So I've, made, I've still got, I've got loads of these decals that I've printed out. Never got around to using. So, you know what, I might actually do these up again, and because I've got one set, I've got no need for them. Who knows, could be another give giveaway on the horizon. But I won't promise anything, because I am pushed for time, but yeah, I could see, because I've done one, you know, obviously I don't want to keep another one in the collection. So I might do this up and give it, a, give it away to a deserving cause. I'll have to put my thinking cap on there. So thanks ever so much, Dan, from Born in the UK. A brilliant, uh, brilliant selection of goodies there. I love, love the custard. I'll add that to my custard collection. And a special thank you to James, Lucy, and Melissa, if you're all watching. I'll get Kevin to say hello to you. He's out at the moment. <clears throat> and it's his mate's Bucks Night, so unfortunately he's not here, but... Uh, uh, I'll tell him, I'll tell him that you like it, all right? Thanks everybody for that, that's brilliant. Here we go, put that back over there. All right, I'm gonna divvy up the chocolate now, so there's one bar for me. There's one bar for Julie. Thank you. And there's one bar for Mr. Anonymous, the cameraman. Thank you. Uh, okay, last one today is from Holger Natk... Natk... <laughs> Holger Natk... From Mönchengladbach in Deutschland, Germany. And uh, it's quite heavy, so let's have a look at this. Hopefully, there's some great stuff in here. I bet there is from Germany. Some quality goods, no doubt. Oh, we've got another plastic bag. It's a happy plastic bag. Thank you. And have a nice day. That's good, isn't it? I'm going to take the lunch to work in for that one tomorrow. Okay, let's have a look. Wow. Oh. Ooh. 
Look at that. Dear Marty, here's some Matchbox toys from my collection that will need a lot of your Marty Matchbox magic. If you think they are way beyond repair, please use them as spare parts from the models. My favourite car for this selection is the 59 Chevy Impala, on which unfortunately some Momzilla seems to have stomped on while trying to destroy Toy City. Maybe you will be able to save it from the scrapyard and give it a second life in your collection. I would enjoy to see a restoration video of it on your channel soon. Also find an old photo camera for your collection. Wow, not a very complex one, but very reliable and made in Western Germany. I knew it! I said it would have a quality German thing in there. The box of chocolate, chocolate cars? Oh, chocolate cars! <laughs> it's for Julie? Yes! <laughs> she will know how to make over them in the right way. Please hand the eucalyptus drops to Kevin. <laughs> They are quite healthy and maybe will have a positive influence on his behaviour. Greetings from Germany. Keep up the good work from Holger. That's right, Holger. All right. Now have a look at these first up. A big box. Can you believe this? Belgium chocolate cars. How about that? Classic wheels. How cool is that? Milk chocolate classic cars filled with hazelnut filling. Oh, UK milk chocolate, no less. Hmm, product of Belgium. How does that work? <laughs> I'm only telling you what it says on the back. There, yeah, oh, well, I can't wait to see them. I'm going to have a cup of them later with a cup of tea. Thank you. No kidding, any. Okay, eucalyptus drops. Is that what they are? They are, oh, oh, they are. I can smell them. It's all, it's all in German. It's all in a foreign language. <laughs> I can't read it, but they do smell Huston bonbons, eucalyptus probably. I can smell them. Something different. Something very different from our, our European friends. Now, what else have we got in here? Loads of stuff. Bubble wrap, mainly. <laughs> Cars, camera. Should we have a look at the camera? Do you want to have a look at the camera? Before the cars, do you want to have a look at the camera? <laughs> Look at the people. <laughs> oh, this is made in Western Germany, remember? Can't wait to see this. Oh, it's a Voigtlander. I've got a couple of those up there. A couple of those are classic Voigtlander cameras. Uh, this reminds me of one my dad used to have, but I don't remember what brand it was. Oh, this is a Voigtlander Bessie. And I won't take that box, but I'll just show you that it is a rather simple looking film camera with a viewfinder. Uh, not many features. So what else? What other features would there be on there? It looks like there's a picture for portraits for outside. That must be an aperture setting. It's a very basic camera, but these are what people used to buy. Let's take. I will take it out of here to have a look at it. It's kind of the basic model that people would have when they were going on holiday. Look at that, just put your roll of film in there and you wind it on with this. And the shutter. I wonder how the shutter is cocked. Like that. As the, as the film is dragged through there, it cocks it. So it works, it's fully operational and looks absolutely pristine. I would say it's never been used actually. But no, this is marvellous. This is in mint condition and it's fantastic. And I can't thank you enough. That is just another great uh, addition to the camera collection. A Voigtlander. Voigtlander Bessie. Okay, everything's out of the box. And there is a huge, a vast amount of stuff here. I'm going to unbox them and have a look at them individually. All right, now this is another one of those cranes. Very similar to the one that I had before, but no, uh, it's a sa similar design. It's got the hook and the, the ram, but it's like the turntable section at the top is broken. So this will also be going into my king size restoration pool. Taylor Jumbo Crane. Is it the same as the other one I've just unboxed? I'm not sure. If it is, I can do two at a time, which would be brilliant. These are some big things here, long, big metal things. What's this? This is a big car. I'm getting a little bit disorganized, aren't I? What do you think? 
This is a big car that someone's drawn all over look with the black text there. Looks like a Ford Capri to me. And it's a Super Queen's Ford Capri Mark II, can you believe? Um, it looks like, oh yeah, look at that, the boot opens. That's nice, nice feature. The doors and the bonnet don't, but you can't have everything, can you? Now, what am I going to do with that? They've coloured in the damn windows again. <laughs> what is it with kids and colouring in the windows? <laughs> it looks quite good, though, with the black stripes that they've done. Holy moly, what have we got here? Oh no, these are some uh, hot, hot Wheels ones. They've got a plastic base. They're made in Thailand, 1986. And this is the Porsche. And it's, I don't know, it doesn't, it doesn't float my boat. You know what I mean? It's uh, sort of, it's Matchbox, but it's not Matchbox, if you know what I mean. Can't believe these have come all the way from Germany. It's amazing. Amazing world in which we live. Now, this is that one before that I had the Opal Diplomat. I got, remember that somebody sent me that bonnet, and it, coincidentally, this one's stretched out of shape, I've been over overextended, and needs a new bonnet. So guess what? Miracles do happen. Uh, there's the uh, super fast version of the the. The fire truck, the uh, pumper truck number 29, remember that? I did one of those with the flashing blue light. That's a shame, it's got all the plastic section missing off the back there and means a complete new part for that it needs to be sourced. This is the first king size tractor I've got. Oh, look at it. <laughs> it's so weird. Look at that. Oh, it's got a gear shifter. That's a cute little uh, extra that I've, ne I've never seen on anything ever before in my life. But it's, it looks so goddamn weird. And the, oh, and the steering was missing. It's an unusual one, that's for sure. Have a look at that. Now, what are these ones? These look familiar to me. Somebody sent me a, a message the other day. Why is there so many blue tractors around? The reason is they came out in, in sets of three on the back of a trailer and it just so happens that there's three in this package and guess what they've all got the tires ripped off <laughs> how annoying stop ripping the tires off kids if you're out there don't rip the tires off any more cars please yes yeah, look at that perfect car models except for the no tires Oh, what else? What next? Uh, this one here. I don't know why. It's just it's calling me. <laughs> hmm. <laughs> That's all I can say about that one. <laughs> it's gone underneath a truck or something. <laughs> this must be the one that he said was stomped on by the uh, Momzilla. Yeah, that's right. Oh, there could be a... Look at that, there's a transparency in there. It's probably in perfect condition by some amazing miracle. Okay, kids, number two, don't take the tires off and don't stomp on the roofs either. Here's another Hot Wheels, a racing car by the looks of it. These are all based on real vehicles, don't forget, that were around when I was of school age. I remember that one of these, next door neighbor used to own one of these, used to start it up early in the morning, drive it around the block on a Sunday. <laughs> That's the, it's got no the driver's head's missing. It's a hideous thing, isn't it? So I think that's a matchbox. It's got what? It's got two two V8 motors on that. It's crazy. Did he ever make such a thing in real life? I don't know. I doubt it. Right. More more intriguing models coming. The Porsche 910, super fast. And the wheels are all buggered on the front there. Dent, I should say. Almost looks like it's doing auto steer, but it's not. It's just the axles. Creased. Not many features on this other than it's red. <laughs> right, quickly, moving on. Oh. Is this a Model T or... Rolls Royce or something. 
Opal Coupe, the model of yesteryear. Okay, well the seats are missing, that's not such a bad thing. Can be fixed. This is, this is bent, that can be straightened. And it could do with the repaint. Overall, totally and utterly, could be done over and made to look good. I don't know whether it had a roof on it. Some of these things have detachable roofs. I hope that one didn't. I'm gonna do some, some research on that one. Oh, Foden, sugar truck, Tate and Lyle. Totally wrecked, but you know what? It's good for spares. It's got no base of the cabin there missing. That'll be good. Look at those, those wheels are perfect on there. That could be worthwhile deconstructing for those wheels. Another super fast. Uh, is that the same as that? No, I thought it was the same because the same era, kind of sexy looking body, curves and all that all over it. 1969 Ford Group 6 super fast. It means nothing to me. I don't know what it means. Uh, again, the axles are bent. You never used to bend. You can hardly ever bend the real axles on the old models. These ones went faster, but they weren't as durable. Well, look at that. We've got, a, we've got the daddy, and now we've got the little baby. Um, same model, just different scales. Strange, isn't it? No gear stick on this one, but it does have the steering wheel. That's in good condition, though, I think. Pretty good condition, except one of the pipes is missing. That's a shame. Okay. It's a police car uh, with green lights. I've never seen that. Green lights usually mean a medical specialist, like a doctor. It's a Rover 3500, made in Macau, this one. It's got actually got a license plate on there, which is rare sort of a detail that you don't find. But overall, it's pretty ordinary little motor. Might have looked good when it was brand new. Uh, and there's something missing off the top there, I guess. Ah, oh, this is only the second one of these I've ever seen in my life. Oh, and I'm just going to have to do it up. I've done one already, but this one here is different to the other one I've got. The one I did never had that hole in the middle. So I wonder if that's a rare thing. Well, that's good. Somebody's done me the favour of pulling the bits already. So, oh, I'm going to do that one up, another one of those, because I like doing that one up, and it turned out really nice. All right, this is old school Fire Chief. Done one of these as well, with the flashing light, the modification, which wasn't easy. I couldn't get the stickers for the front there, I remember that. Um, yes, worthy of doing up, that one. I could never have enough to do up. This one here, what is this one called? Now, what a monstrosity that is. That's horrible. It's the Pooper Scooper. No, sorry, it's the Super Cooper. <laughs> the Super Cooper. It looks like it could be a Pooper Scooper, but it's not. It's the Super Cooper. Oh, the Land Rover. Land Rover 90, made in Macau. 1987, super fast wheels. I don't know what it is about super fast wheels. I think it's because they were all the same sort of design. They kind of made the model look boring. Now, I know that sounds stupid because all the old cars had the same wheels too. But I don't know. I think it took away something and I don't quite know what. So it's not a bad little model though. I like it. Now, this one here, I definitely do not have. Arrow. Remember they came out in different brands. This one I did not had. The Arrow. I think Time Rider did one of these up, I'm pretty sure. It's got the ergomatic card and it's a matchbox series. Oh, and uh, somebody's done me the favor of pulling it apart. So that's uh, pretty, gonna be easy to do up. But that'll be good because I haven't got one of those. We're nearly, nearly finished, people. I've got four long ones after this one. And guess what? The tires are missing off the front, but actually the tires are still on it at the back. It's amazing. Ah, oh, the crane's broken in half. That is a really, really nice model if it was working and had the bits on it. It's a big, great play value in that, you know, a big crane to push around. It's great, isn't it? It's the number 12, king size. Oh, there. It's a nice model. 
so many bits missing, broken tyres, windscreen. Wow, they had a hell of a day, didn't they, these models? Okay, this is a boat, a ship, no less. I do hope this is complete. I have no idea. 1979. A Corvette convoy escort. Such a weird little thing for a, uh, a matchbox model. Look at that, it glides beautifully. Doesn't it? It's a great little model. But, uh, and I haven't, <laughs> I might have seen one before. I know somebody sent me another one and it was similar, but I don't think it was that wide. And that could be an aerial missing off there or a radar or something. Looks like something snapped off there. But that's uh, a quirky one. I never knew they did boats until that person sent me one uh, a while ago. And now that's the second one I've got. I don't know what to say. I'm lost for words. A pink truck with a lime green trailer. Very unusual, uh, smashed in damaged windscreen and the wheels are all buckled. And it's a really basic model. It's only like four bits to it. It's a Dyson low loader and it was actually made in England in 1971. It's not a patch on the, uh, the old ones though, is it? It really isn't. Like the color choice is all wrong for starters. Well, that's my opinion anyway. But I wonder what went on the back there. Might have to look that up in the encyclopedia that I received the other week. Oh, this is the upper deck of the car transporter. One of which I've got. And I wonder why, I wonder where the other part is. I wonder if this is it here. I think, you know what, it may well be. And it's all complete except for one tire missing. Obviously there's a couple of hinge pins missing as well and there's a bit of damage on the back there that would be difficult to address and I reckon it would make for a great model. The other one I'm not going to touch because it's in such good condition but this one here demands some attention. Uh, so a great set from Holger Nantke from Munchen Gladbach in Germany. can't believe the variety of stuff he sent me. Thank you very much. It's uh, been a wonderful day. This one here is my favourite. I love the way it glides. This, uh, what is it, 155mm uh, howitzer shell is uh, quite the oddity today. So that takes first place for the weirdest thing I've been sent this time round. So thank you very much everybody. It's been, a, it's been like Christmas. <laughs> and I've just got to put the pins in the map and then I shall say goodbye. Until then. Right, the first package today was from Germany, a place uh, called Dresden, from Hugo Blomers, or Blomers. So I'm going to put that in now, which is about up here, I believe, looking on Google Earth. So there you go, Hugo, that's yours, the orange one there in Germany. Okay, now we had two packages today from New South Wales in Australia, Quakers Hill, and the lady's name was Rose Whitfield. She sent me those beautiful things. And I've got two pink pins here for Rose. I'm going to put them in here, which is roughly where I think Quakers Hill is. So two pink ones there for Rose in the same spot, because she sent me two packages. So awesome. Thank you. Right now, the next one, is next pin today is Tom Jensen in Barnesville, Minnesota, which is near Atlanta <clears throat> or Macon. So I should put this up here in... Out there. So there we go. Okay, next pin is for Holger Nantk from Munchen Gladbach in Germany, which by my estimation is near Essen, which is marked on the map. So I shall put in this pin for Holger. There we go. It's a nice sky blue pin for you. Thank you for your contribution. Last one today is for Dan Griffin, Ripping Gale in Bourne in the UK, which is up on the eastern coast. It's getting a bit crowded up here. So what colour pin am I using? A green one, a bright green one. Let's go up here. There it is there. <laughs> That's yours, Dan Griffin. Thank you very much 
for all your efforts today people it's been a great unboxing episode i've really enjoyed it sorry about the sound quality i do apologize that was my fault i was testing a new mic and didn't plug it in sometimes i drop the ball uh, until next time i'll see you on saturday with a new makeover until then this is marty from marty's matchbox makeover saying goodbye and thanks for watching